Introduction to Locks. So, locks are an important um, exercise in uh, character animation. Uh, basically, a lock features all the basic elements of, of mechanics, but you can also have a lot of variety and personality and, and acting involved uh, once you master the, the basic walk. Now, we'll be uh, breaking down uh, the various uh, poses in uh, walks, and the two most important ones are shown here. The uh, contact pose, when uh, both feet are on the ground, the legs are farthest apart. And the passing position, which is uh, one foot on the ground, the other foot is in the air as the leg swings uh, under the torso. Uh, now there's intermediate uh, poses uh, between these, and, and those have a variety of uh, names for the uh, pose that transitions from contact into passing position and the uh, one that transitions out of passing positions, but uh, for now we'll uh, just focus on these two. Now, a few things to understand about the uh, vocabulary of uh, walks. Uh, first, we have the uh, step and stride. Uh, stride is simply uh, two steps, so uh, one full cycle of a walk uh, would be a stride. And we talk about the step length uh, and the stride length. So basically the stride length is the distance that uh, the character uh, travels when uh, walking one full cycle. Uh, probably more interesting is the uh, gait. So the gait indicates the timing of the motion for uh, each foot or each leg. So it indicates uh, what that leg is doing uh, in time. So we uh, might start in the contact pose uh, with both feet on the ground, then uh, transition and enter into the passing position and then leave the passing position, then both feet are on the ground for a certain time, and, and so forth. So, uh, the typical timing uh, for a walk is about uh, half a second per step, or about 12 frames per step, which makes um, 24 frames for a stride, or a full cycle. Uh, there's variations, of course, so uh, we can uh, have fewer frames or more frames uh, during uh, the cycle, but this is uh, the uh, typical uh, walking uh, timing, and uh, you can uh, think of that in terms of the uh, parade march time, which most uh, parade music is set to. So, um, music like ta 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 you uh, just hum that to yourself and, and walk, and you'll see that uh, you follow the uh, typical timing. Now let's look at the um, uh, gait pattern here in a little more detail. So uh, for uh, typical walking, uh, the first contact pose is about 10% of the cycle. Then uh, we have one foot in the air for 40%. Uh, that completes one step. Then we have a uh, contact pose again for 10%, and then the other uh, leg is in the air for the remaining uh, 40%. So this is a very typical uh, gait uh, pattern for a normal uh, walk. And uh, you see here that um, the contact uh, time uh, when the walk uh, is faster, this uh, percentage for the contact uh, time tends to go down a little bit, uh, but also the total amount of time uh, for a uh, stride uh, goes down. Here's uh, another example of a um, different uh, gait pattern. This is for a um, character walking with a painful uh, leg. 
So uh, with the um, painful leg, you might think that the um, natural tendency would be to have the, that leg on the ground a minimum amount of time, but actually uh, what happens is the uh, passing position with that leg uh, being the leg on the ground, that tends to uh, decrease and the contact pose with uh, both legs on the ground uh, tends to increase. Um, and then uh, uh, the total amount of time for a uh, stride uh, increases significantly. In other words, the uh, person walks rather slowly. So uh, one of the ways of understanding uh, this pattern is that uh, the pressure on the leg uh, has a spike uh, during the uh, contact pose and so uh, in order to minimize that uh, increase in, in pressure uh, you walk slowly and extend the time of the contact pose as long as uh, is practical in order to uh, minimize those uh, pressure variations. Anyway, the point here is that uh, with uh, different conditions, uh, all of that's indicated in the uh, this uh, gait uh, pattern and timing. Now, when you walk faster, you tend to increase both the length of your steps or the you know, length of your stride, and then also the cadence or the rate at which you're taking steps. So, uh, for example, if you're if your slow walk has a stride length of three feet and a stride rate of uh, two thirds of a stride per second, in other words, two strides every three seconds, uh, this works out to be a speed of about two feet uh, per second. Uh, so this would be a, a slow walk. Uh, a fast walk uh, might be you increase your stride length uh, to four feet, and then you increase your stride rate to uh, one stride per second, and uh, the combination of those two uh, doubles your speed to four feet per second. Uh, and at around a um, uh, faster speed of about six to seven uh, feet per second, you uh, don't tend to walk, your, your pattern transitions into something very different, which would be a run. Uh, so the point here is that you don't um, walk faster simply by taking bigger steps or simply by changing your um, cadence, but you actually do both. Let's take a quick look at a few reference videos here. First, a normal walk. Now a slow walk. Now a fast walk, and finally, uh, let's look at that slow walk, but we'll play it at uh, double speed, uh, so it's as if it was uh, fast. So uh, the uh, slow walk uh, played fast. Uh, doesn't uh, look natural, it just looks like it's being played at high speed. Now, the question would be, well, uh, when we're walking, uh, why do we take the step length uh, that, that we choose? So, uh, certainly it's possible to take uh, longer steps or shorter steps, so um, when we walk at a certain speed, why do we uh, take the uh, step length? Uh, that that we do. Uh, well, it turns out that the uh, body naturally adjusts the step length to minimize the uh, energy required to maintain a certain walking speed. So that's why it's unnatural to walk fast by taking many, many uh, quick short steps. And it's unnatural to walk slow by taking uh, long steps 
uh, but uh, with a very slow cadence. Now, this um, energy requirement, you can understand that uh, there's two competing factors here. Uh, when you move the leg forward out of the contact pose, uh, it takes some energy to um, give that leg um, speed. So just to get the leg moving, the body has to um, exert a force, and so you, some energy is, is required. Now once the leg is moving, it just continues moving, so uh, it actually takes less energy uh, to take fewer long steps uh, than it takes to take uh, many short steps. So in this regard, long steps are favorable in terms of the energy required to move the leg. On the other hand, uh, when you take long steps, uh, the body uh, drops a large distance um, in the contact pose and then has to rise a large distance into the passing position and that requires energy so uh, raising and lowering the body uh, going uh, out of the contact into passing position to raise it and then dropping back into contact uh, pose uh, so that uh, takes energy and uh, long steps require more energy in terms of raising and lowering the body so uh, we have these two competing factors and uh, your body has to find uh, the best balance between those two uh, depending on the walking speed that you want to uh, be going. And uh, you can take measurements, uh, take put people on a treadmill, fix the speed of the treadmill. If you ask them to take short steps and walk quickly and measure uh, their um, uh, energy uh, consumption, it turns out that uh, takes more energy. If you take have them take long steps with a slow cadence, that takes more energy. Uh, this minimum in energy uh, consumption happens to occur at the step length that the body naturally uh, finds when uh, walking at that speed. So, in summary, uh, walking has a uh, two basic poses, the contact uh, pose with both feet on the ground and the passing position with one leg moving under the torso. Uh, both feet are on the ground about 20% of the time uh, for a cycle, so that's about 10% uh, for the uh, first step, then 40% uh, of the time one leg is in the air uh, in the first step and then the pattern re repeats another 10%, both feet on the ground and 40% uh, one leg in the air. That's the uh, gait pattern we were looking at. Uh, when you walk faster, you tend to increase both the step length and the rate at which you are taking steps or the, the cadence. Uh, it's not natural to uh, only change the step length or only change the cadence. And then uh, for uh, different uh, walking speeds, the body uh, finds the step length that happens to minimize the required energy consumption uh, for that step length. That's why um, walking at a certain speed, there's a certain uh, step length that feels natural um, to the walk. Uh, so, now, uh, it's amazing, but uh, just over years of walking, uh, your body has naturally uh, discovered this, uh, uh, these step lengths. Well, that's a um, basic introduction to walks. We'll be getting into a lot more details uh, of the different elements in the um, next tutorial, so I'll see you then.